Well, it, it kind of sounds that way, but really what we, had, what we did uh, was we set aside three months in case the matter proceeds to trial for February 2020. That was a date that uh, we had discussed last week when we were talking about scheduling. Uh, as of yesterday, some additional time became available at an earlier date, but given the stage where the case is at and everything that I know that still needs to take place if the matter proceeds to trial, I just think uh, February 2020 is a more realistic timeline and certainly didn't want to be in a situation where we would be needing to ask the court for additional time before the trial. So this is safe and uh, it, it is a much, much more realistic time estimate in my view. You said in case the, court, the case goes to trial, do you have any indication from your client that this wouldn't go to trial? No, but uh, at this point, no final decisions have been made. It, uh, it, w as with every case, the possibility of resolution is always present. And what we do in this case uh, between now and the time it's set for trial is uh, really, it, it remains to be seen. And, and once we have a complete handle on all the disclosure materials and all our own investigative steps that we're taking, uh, then those decisions will be made. It's, it's just premature to talk about those, uh, uh, those calls right now, but at some point they're going to have to be made. And, if the matter is going to proceed to trial, it's necessary to set aside the time now so that we're not pushing it back even further once we're ready to make that decision. Boris, can you just tell us where September fits into the mix? Is there a possibility that we should be moving to September of next year? I, I don't see that now. Uh, the, the court does have the availability at this point, but by the time we're in a position to make the decision one way or the other, I don't expect the court's going to have the availability anymore. And, and to, be, uh, to be candid, I, I was offered the September dates. I didn't even check my own calendar to see if I'm available at that point. I, we. We had kind of settled on February as of last week, and that's what I was expecting. Three to four months seems like a long time, but from a legal point of view, there's a lot of stuff to go over in this case, true? Yes, and if it does go to trial, I, I think it's important to stress that that is an outside time limit that we've estimated. It's always better to estimate more time rather than less because uh, because of the fact that we're still early and, it, and it's not clear what all the issues are going to be if the matter proceeds to trial. Uh, we've taken a very liberal estimate in terms of what uh, we might need, and if it once we get closer to the trial date, if it is going to proceed, we'll know better. And uh, it, more likely than not, it'll be shorter. I, I doubt it will take any longer than that time Do estimate. Do you have an idea at what point when your client is going to make an appearance in court? He won't make any appearances. He doesn't have to make any appearances because of the designation of counsel that's filed. So uh, he won't make an appearance until really there's a reason for him to be here. And, and while we're going through all the preliminary steps, there's just no reason to, uh, to bring him here. There's no reason to waste the court resources, the security that's involved in, in transporting somebody. It, it really, um, and, until we're ready to move forward with this case and, and make more meaningful decisions, uh, I can appear on his behalf, and that's what I've been doing. Is there a possibility that a plea could be submitted at some point? Well, at some point, he'll have to enter a plea one way or the other, whether it's a plea of guilty or a plea of not guilty. Uh, we don't do that in Canada until much closer, or until the trial starts, or if there's a resolution that's been arrived at, it'll be done at an earlier stage. So, well, look, there's always a possibility. I. I don't think it's uh, appropriate to stand in front of cameras with bluster and to make bold predictions. Uh, we are not at the stage where we're able to say uh, professionally wh what the case is going to entail. We're, we're still through the investigative phase and once we're ready to make these decisions then those decisions will be made but right now it's all premature so um, as with every case uh, and with every lawyer, uh, whether they'll admit it publicly or not. Every case uh, requires an assessment of the uh, of the entirety of the circumstances and the best decisions made at that point. How is your client doing? Um, my client's in custody and he has remained in custody since his arrest. And uh, really beyond that, I, I I don't wish to to bring him into this picture. I, I haven't done that to this point, and uh, there's no there's no reason why I'm going to start doing that now. If this does go to trial, do you think you can get a fair trial in Toronto, or would you look at a change of venue? Or given the high profile nature of this, is there a place you feel? Isn't prejudicial at this point. Well, certainly uh, the, the the possibility of a change of venue is uh, is real, and if the matter is destined for trial, then I expect that uh, that application is quite likely to be brought. I do believe that um, a case such as this, and it's not to suggest that Torontonians can't give Mr. Manassian a fair trial, but. Um, the change of venue provisions in the criminal code are, in my view, designed for cases such as this, where there's been an overwhelming amount of uh, media attention. Uh, and frankly, more than that, it, there are so many people in Toronto that have been directly touched by this. There are many victims who are still grieving. Mr. Manassian uh, and I and his family continue to, to respect the fact that there are many grieving people and many victims in this, in this tragedy. Um, and Putting the trial in a place where we don't have the, the direct connection to the victims is, is really a much safer and fair way to proceed, in my opinion. But uh, if an application is brought, the court will rule on it and we'll proceed wherever uh, the court decides. Given the high-profile nature, though, it might be hard to find a place where 
people aren't familiar with the details of this case. Might be hard to find a place where people aren't familiar with the details, but it will be easier to find a place where people don't have the direct connections and the direct uh, that haven't been touched as closely by uh, by the tragedy. Uh, right now, we uh, I'm sure everybody in the city knows somebody, uh, at least knows somebody that knows somebody uh, that's been directly involved. And um, in, in a perfect world, we're going to have trials where you don't have that type of connection to to the victims and to the tragedy itself. When this goes to trial, given the complexities, how long do you think it would last? Well, we set aside three to four months at this point. Uh, we'll refine that uh, time figure as we get closer. And uh, as I said earlier, I think we've picked that time to, to sort of guess at what might be the longest realistic time that we'll need. Uh, it, it is likely that if we're able to, uh, even if the matter proceeds to trial, I think it's likely that we'll be able to refine many of the issues and cut that time down. But it's always safer to set aside three to four months and end up using two than uh, as opposed to setting aside two months and then trying to, to f figure out a way to get jurors to stay for three to four. Can you speak to the complexities of this case and everything that you're gathering right now in terms of the evidence and going through it? I don't know that I, I can say much about it. It's a, obviously an extensive investigation. There are hundreds, uh, literally hundreds of police officers that were involved in this investigation. There are, uh, there's an en enormous amount of uh, civilian witnesses that have been interviewed. There are uh, multiple surveillance cameras that have been obtained. So really you have um, a, a very large investigation with uh, many different factual and legal issues that are being uh, dealt with all at the same time. And uh, so it's an extensive project, which is why we need the time to fully prepare and, and uh, proceed professionally and, and quite, quite properly if we do. So. Thanks, sir.